Goalkeepers, Christian and Paul from Keeper Stop. Special guest, Jimmy Slayton, former goalkeeper in your Hartford. Plays for the Real Salt Lake uh, professional MLS program. He's actually the goalkeeper for the Monarchs, which is the USL team. We're excited to have him. What we want to go through today is a pro warm-up. We want to know how Jimmy prepares for a match. Absolutely, can't wait. Ready, high knees, let's go. <laughs> All right, so first, We'll get 10 volleys in just to wake the hands up, kind of start to get some touches on the ball, feel comfortable handling everything. So what I'm thinking about is really, I just kind of want to start to get my feet active. I want to get my hands active. If it's a little off to the side, just moving my feet, making the catch nice and simple. Just really want to wake my hands up. This is my, these are my first contacts with the ball. Just want to get comfortable handling everything. Start getting your mind right. Yeah, start getting my mind right. Nice and easy to start. Then after that, try and get the feet engaged a bit more with some footwork into some handling. Um, like to keep it going from both sides so the movements are symmetrical, all that type of stuff. Take that one again. So with that one, really just want to wake them up a little bit, start to get the movements. If I'm not handling something, I just want to take the volley again just to feel comfortable. For me, it's all about more the mental side. I want to feel comfortable with it. I want to feel ready, be confident in my hands. Once I'm comfortable with there, I just want to see some lower balls. So I'll get a different pattern of footwork. First one, just to get me ready from each side. I just like to make sure I'm stretched out going down with a nice, easy hamstring, getting a stretch, not really worried about the technique. I just need something clean, easy, get the hamstring stretched out. Then I progress into one same footwork, just going into a smother to feel comfortable with that. And then the third one would be a dipping volley from a bit of a deeper range, just to adjust to the field, see how the field plays, how it skips in for the day and that type of stuff. So one hamstring each side, one smother each side, then one dipper each side. You good? Yep. Yep. So with that one, again, just want to start feeling comfortable getting some different moves in, different movements. Then I'll take a moment to stretch, just kind of get myself ready again. What I love about it is, um, again, what you did was to replicate the movements that you, um, that you see in the game. But your question for you is, you're not in the goal, why? So, so at this level, really, we're, we're not allowed to be in the goal, most fields. Um, generally playing on a pretty nice grass surface, so they're like, they try and keep that blocked off for the first 20, 15, 20 minutes of the warm-up. So we step out here. Surface is generally a bit better, too, um, just because the six gets chewed up. And then you just have a bit more of a, a true bounce, get a feel for the conditions to be comfortable rather than getting thrown into maybe a sand pit or whatever else might happen. So what I like about this as well is like, I believe in short, short, sharp movements, right? right. Um, you know, the goal is, is big, right? Is, is learn to control your body and the ball in this environment first. I mean, is that why you're, I mean, this is five yards. Right. Why, why do you choose five yards as your movement? 
So five yards, that's, that's really the most important part of the goal. Obviously the top corner saves are important, extension saves are important, but you have to be 100% in here or 95%. You know, you, most saves in a, in a game are gonna come within the five yards of where you are. Um, having good handling, being able to move our feet so we're not relying on diving too much. This gets me nice and comfortable with that. So now all I wanna do is I wanna change to more of a lateral footwork rather than a vertical footwork. So I just pop over the cones here, nice and quick. Then I incorporate the drop step because that's important in every aspect of the game. A lot of movements are involved with that. So dropping into here, nice and comfortable, low ball. Again, I ask that whoever's serving for me keeps it nice and comfortable for the first rep each side. I haven't hit the ground yet. Again, it's my warm up's all about a progression, feeling comfortable, gradually building up to what I'm gonna have to do for 90 minutes, 110 minutes, 120 minutes, whatever it is. Um, and then I progress gradually from a comfortable low ball to a bit more of a stretch low ball than a mid-level collapse dive. What's important about this is comfort and this is what prepares you. So I think it's important for goalkeeper coaches and goalkeepers alike to work on something that helps prepare the goalkeeper. So there's communication. And I love just even before this with Paul being the survey, he's like, Paul, we're not stretching me out here. I need that ball on the service. I need that service on the ground and I need it this high. And again, because we're trying to get his mind right. We're trying to develop that confidence. So let's see it in action. So if you watch his feet, they're quick and they're tight in between. Start to stretch a bit. Yep. And he's square early. So he's warming up, getting square. Love that. So now, as you can see, goalkeeper coach Paul is starting to stretch him a little bit. Quicker services. And now we're going to move up to a mid-level shot. And that's it. Comfortable hitting the ground. Don't need any more than that in this area. And then I'm off into the goal. Okay, goalkeepers. So now we're going to transition into goal. You know, college pros, as Jimmy was saying, you're out of the goal majority of the time. The grass is nice over there. It's short and sharp, but you do want to get into the goal. You want to see how the goal plays, right? Um, you want to start working on some angles. So now we have our uh, goalkeeper coach, Paul, out to the side. Jimmy, take it away. All right. So Again, like Christian said, I like to get comfortable out there, but then I want to get my movements in goal as well. So I like to start with just a little bit of it around the world. Six services, six quality reps. First one, I'm on the post here, as if it were a service wide, maybe a cutback zone. Just quick little turn, nice and sharp, nice and comfortable save. Again, I don't need to be stretched right now. With, with where I'm at, I feel comfortable just getting good quality reps in and around my bubble. So I'll turn off the post, just finding a new angle, turning into here, kind of a negative set, drop step type movement. Again, serve. Working on that angle first, then I like to go central, get two negative services just to see from there. And then I like to do the same thing I did here on the other angle. So really those movements replicate the movements I'm doing most often in a game. I mean, what do you mean about bubble? So when I say a bubble, that's just my bubble right here. Anything that I don't expect to hit the ground my bubble is basically my zone. I feel comfortable catching a ball, handling a ball cleanly. That's where I expect myself to be 100%. Great. All right, let's get going. Nice shape behind that. I have faith in him. <laughs> Goalkeepers and coaches that are watching, I have the mic on. That's why I am behind him. No, just take a couple steps back. So again, we did the drop step. We've done almost like three goals. So you're just you're just replicating movements that you would see during a game. Exactly. Yeah, I just want to start to feel comfortable in the goal with those movements. Sometimes you gotta touch the cap. <laughs> it's a hell of a warm up there, Paul. Huh? Coach Paul is fired for the record here. Paul's gonna come a little bit closer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Go to each side. Oh. 
nice clean fold. So if you notice goalkeepers, we started off tighter angled middle, working them a little bit left and right, and now we're going to the far side. Doesn't have to be big, doesn't have to be big and bold. Building confidence, helping the goalkeeper feel comfortable. Now we're getting back into three goal movements, cutback movements. Go one more. Yep. Good. So how do you feel? What's I mean, tell me how you feel physically right now, or is it is it just taxing enough where you got the blood flowing or are you tired? Yep. So so with that, a little bit out of breath, don't want to be gassed, don't want to be dead, but start to move around, start to hit the ground, it's gotta gonna get you moving a bit more get you feeling even more loose ready to go um, like I did a couple of times if I want to take a couple extra reps not happy with the rep just pop and take an extra one feel comfortable it's not about who's serving take your time get through what you have to do make sure you're comfortable first good what are we moving on to next um, next we'll move on to distribution nice get the feet ready all right so now Jimmy's gonna get into some distribution so if you noticed uh, sh uh, footwork short and sharp uh, went around the world, some quality services and goal, um, diving, and now he's gonna start taking it down just a little bit, right? right. Mirroring the ebbs and flows of the games. And also you don't wanna just show up after your, your warm up, be like, oh my gas, I'm so tired. Right. So now he's getting into something that is a little bit more subdued, you know, something that's gonna ground you a little bit and also recover you, right? right. So what do we have going on here now? So here we just got some distribution. I like to start with just a nice, simple one-time pass back, get a little bit of movement still. So all it really is, I just shuffle out to one server. I just want to get comfortable with my right foot. The serve from him, real soft and simple. I just want to get a good contact on the ball. I want to feel comfortable. Nice quick shuffle out to the left side, get the left foot comfortable as well. Just three each side, four each side, however many you feel comfortable. If I miss hit one, probably taking an extra rep or so. So, great. Yep. Let's see it. There we go. You know, a little bit less pace. Yeah. You're getting Jimmy back to his roots here on a Connecticut grass field. So this is important for goalkeepers of all levels, right? They're getting a good uh, perspective of the pitch that they're on. Right? Grass versus turf, slippery versus dry, right? Yeah. And you know, you saw the first distribution, right? It, it took a little bit of a bounce on you. So it gives you the ability to see what you're dealing with in front of you while you're warming your feet up. Right. You want to see the tough ones get out of the system first. And then by the end, you want to feel nice and clean. Cool. What are we progressing to next? So now we're just going to open up to the outside corner of the box. Now we're getting into two touch just to transfer. I'll receive a ball from Paul making sure I'm looking over my shoulder just to simulate the real game movement. You want to know where everybody is. So touch, open up, play out to Jameis. Get it back, going out the other way, just feel uncomfortable. So are you working on uh, all sides of your feet? So touch outside or are you receiving right, playing left? I mean, how do you start to warm up your distribution over longer? Yeah, so it kind of depends. Sometimes depends on the service. Sometimes I'll ask for a bit more of a choppy service. Just kind of depends generally. I'm taking that touch with my right here, going on my left. It also depends on the pressure. There's some situations where you might have to take a flatter touch or you might have to take a vertical touch to beat a guy coming in, whatever it takes. Just play with it a little bit. You're Feel simulating that in your right. head a little bit. Right. Okay, so as Jimmy said, this is two touches. He gives himself a nice little self pass, simulate, you know, maybe a change of direction, relieving pressure. But what I think is important for their um, goalkeepers that are watching this is we go on simple, right? One touch close, this is further. And now the next progression is to go now maybe hit a, a ball to an outside midfielder or a back that's going a little high. So now we're talking about penetration, right? Beating, beating two or three strikers. So watch this and appreciate what it is, which is very simple, but it's 
as Jimmy said, it's developing confidence in that distribution close to that, that middle ball, which is really difficult for a lot of goalkeepers right. to hit. So let's go. Yeah. How much talking you do during this? Are you telling them play left, play right, or you, or it's, right now this is just for you, just for your mind, right? right yeah, okay. Kind of just what's Great. So as you can see, nothing but instep here. Two touches, a little bit of a self pass, keeping possession. Now just a little bit higher, a little bit wider, so I plug in the touch line. Oh, there it is. But right now, so what do you, this is a warm-up. What are you thinking right now? First one's out of the way, on to the next. Good, that's, I like, I like it. Get that. it out, get it out. So as you can see right now, a good touch to himself. He's using his laces now. Maybe beating a, you know, pressing two or three strikers. Finding an outside back that's getting a little higher. Both feet, as you can tell. A, that was a quality touch to the left, huh? If you notice, there's nice big space for him to run onto it, to keep possession or to clear it. That's important. Higher, wider now. So now, what are you looking for? So now we're, you know, ten yards. It looks like inside uh, midfield. Are you just? Are you still looking for accuracy? What are you? What are you thinking about here? Yeah, yeah. Still looking for accuracy. With that one, that distance is kind of a tweener where you could drive it out into his feet, his thigh, bounce it in, whatever you can to just get it out there quick. This one probably not going to be able to hit this on the ground this high. This is probably one where maybe they're in a higher press. Your center back's wide, guys with him, and our wingers stretching them so that their outside back can't come to our outside back. So this is just kind of that ball. Getting it here, can we break the press a little bit? Great. That's it. What a touch, Paul, what a touch. That's a beautiful strike right there. What are you looking for from them wide? Are you, do you want the ball on the ground? you want it in the air, variety, or what? It, it could mix up. James has been playing some on the ground. I can see that. Paul's playing somewhere. <clears throat> Maybe my outside back's giving me a choppy ball. You gotta just adjust to what's given sometimes. Paul gets a beautiful one. Nice. Okay, so going through the progressions, right? Footwork, diving, um, 
angles and shot stopping and goal you brought it back down a little bit for distribution for a little bit of recovery and now you're going to pick it back up again a little bit with crosses right. um obviously crosses from both sides but where do you like to have uh crosses start from and why right so generally i'm taking anywhere from three to five crosses each side and they'll come anywhere from the corner like an actual corner spot to about 25 yards up so I like to just see a couple different angles, want to see the flight from a different spot, just want to adjust to the wind. If someone's not going to corner an in-swinger and if the wind's blowing hard, I, I want to see it from that angle, you know, just to make sure I know where to pick my starting point. Um, but I just, it just helps me read the flight, get acclimated to the conditions and just start to see the ball well. Test your footwork a little bit coming out. Um, also for night games, right? Where, where the lights are um, and how the ball um, looks in the lights. Right. So yeah. you, you get into your forties, that, that's a concern. So, <laughs> all right, crosses from both sides. Here we go. So obviously goalkeepers and coaches look at a starting position. He's able to come back if needed. He can get forward if needed. Sun's as bad as light right now. <laughs> Jimmy's comment was uh, the sun, right? So that's a concern. So he wants to figure out how he's going to play uh, a flighted ball higher in the channel during a day game. So he starts figuring out where he likes his hand positioning. And you notice the channel is where the ball is being served from right now. So this could be a, a free kick. I, I was with Atlanta for their combine, so I spoke with him a fair bit. I talked to him about you, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. So when you when you said that you were interested, like that this, that was your goal, I contacted Aaron. I contacted a couple others. Appreciate that. Uh, mem uh, memo. I contacted Memo, and then you're like, oh, I'm just gonna. Then Mirza got the job at Real, and I was like, oh, there you go. Okay, <laughs> that works. Coaching point now this is what I'm going to do. So I keep going. So if you notice, he starts backing, get forward. He's figuring out the flight of the ball. Services from various sides away. You know, he didn't go for that ball. It's not realistic. And the point, the sharper angle here. The point is, it's nice and comfortable. It's nice and easy. Developing confidence here. So that's a wrap. I mean, how we could change this, and this is something you have to work with your team, right? Is that probably what he would do is catch his highest point, get to the top of the box, and now you're working on distribution, right? Right. Um, so that's something you can throw in, but that has to be planned though. You can't just throw that in because you're, you may have another team in the other half or your coaches are working in a possession game somewhere on the field. So that I would say as far as a warm-up goes, the crossing element is the most challenging for goalkeepers and coaches because yeah, in goal, that's, this is your box, they give right. it to you. But now you wanna work on that distribution. And so that's why it's important to build confidence, work on an accuracy because theoretically, you also don't wanna hit your you know, starting you know, star center mid or striker in the back of the head. So, but hey, I appreciate this. This is w w the point of this, uh, you know, warm up was just so that you guys can see what a professional warm up looks like. I mean, Jimmy started out as one of us, uh, you know, Connecticut, grass fields, ODP, University of Hartford stand out now playing for the Monarchs. And this is what a pro goalkeeper does. And I think what's important to highlight, it's nothing crazy. You're not pulling balls out of the corner, but if you wanted to, that's what you would do. I know some goalkeepers that's, they want to do that kind of stuff. So give us an idea of, you know, how you feel after something like that. And maybe what do you do once you uh, finish this element? Yeah, so once I really finish this, then we'll get into some stuff with the team, just getting some live shots. So I like to control pretty much every aspect of this, very controlled environment. My goalkeeper coach, Mirza and I, will, we figured this out in preseason. We figured out what our pregame would be in preseason. The team knew that, the assistant coaches knew what it was. It was very orchestrated from the beginning. Um, but like after something like this, 
huffing, puffing a little, but I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. I got everything I needed, as many reps as I needed, and I'm just feeling confident for the game. How many shots are you taking with your team? Um, just enough to feel good. I mean, sometimes it depends on how well they're hitting the target. If they're sky in five and only giving me one quality one, I'll probably stand in a little bit longer. If I have four top class saves, then I'll take a step out, get some more long range distribution, relax, stretch, and just uh, just enough for me to feel even more comfortable and confident. So as a goalkeeper coach that coach at the division one level, I like to show my goalkeepers, you know, through balls and, you know, breakaways versus blocking. Um, how do you do that? Is it just, do you tailor it based on who you're playing that day? Maybe, you know, they play with three and there, you have, there's plenty of runners through. Um, how do you tailor that? Yeah, so at the pro level with some more time in between games and everything, we have a lot of time to prepare week in and week out. So if we're playing against a team that plays a lot of direct balls into channels for runners, we're gonna work on starting position a lot of the week. We're gonna stress starting position when we're going 99, and we're going to tailor our sessions around that. So I don't have to be, I don't have to come in on game day and be like, oh yeah, they, they play a lot of through balls. And I'm like, oh, that's a shock to me. You see it on film. You just, you got to prepare even more. Every, every level you climb up, preparation's more key. So what's important about this for goalkeepers and coaches that are watching, it's orchestrated. It's communication between goalkeeper and goalkeeper coach. You know, there's no surprises. It's down to the minute. Right. Right, you guys know, and at the pro level, you have, you know, commercials, you have national anthems, you have walkouts, you have everything, college level, the same thing. So it's not like, you know, you can take your 20 minute warm up goes to an hour and 10 minutes, right? Yeah. It's, it has to be on point to get you mentally and physically prepared, but also you only have a certain amount of time on the field. Absolutely. So I appreciate all of this. Uh, any parting thoughts for uh, aspiring goalkeepers, either at the collegiate level, high school level, or even after? No, I mean, thank you to you and Keeper Stop for always taking care of me. But when it comes down to it, you could get anywhere you want to be as long as you want to put the work in and you, you care enough and you really, really put the passion into it as well. I mean, I've got a good support system here. I come back in my off season and I've got people willing to train me, help me out with glove needs, whatever it is. But yeah, just yeah. got to make sure you got the right people around you and make sure you got the right mentality going forward. And that's it. And as a part, as a closing thing, what I will say about Jimmy and the reason why he's a pro is obviously you're exceptionally humble, but you're, you have such an engine on you. You're so hardworking. So there's no substitute for hard work. Yeah. I mean, this is off season when he's hanging out and he's done multiple sessions this week already. You're doing fitness. You know, you got to put the time in on and off the field and throughout your career from high school to college to the pros. I, I've known that you've always had that focus and the determination. Right. And that's what's important to make it at the professional level. And we wish you the most success going forward. And uh, we love being a part of the journey. Appreciate it. Thank you.